students who invite you, this is extremely special. So I just wanted to thank you, and Janetta particularly, that she was guiding me through this process of preparation to this meeting and to share with you uh, uh, our research. Uh, Richard Feynman uh, says uh, that religion is a culture of faith, that science is a culture of doubts. And that's really true. I had been here about two years ago and we had a few concepts that I described in chemistry department and you know, it didn't change much since then. But yet, the next level of understanding and evidence uh, emerged that I would like to share with you in four little stories. Now, uh, neuroscience is extremely broad. This umbrella really modern uh, uh, discipline right now that really spans uh, from uh, chemistry to psychology and uh, neuroscience is perhaps the, the uh, discipline of the future. Among the neuroscientists, vision has a very special place and, and the reason for that, that the advancement in understanding of vision is really much, really uh, greater and deeper than any other neuroscience disciplines and any other sensory transduction because again, uh, the accessibility of the tissue, and, and also from genetic point of view, it's not lethal uh, when one loses sight, or you can generate that in mice. So our understanding today on the fundamental processes of our vision are virtually on a chemistry level, and even more, uh, we're reaching into quantum chemistry. And that's what will happen with the brain research in a few years from now, once you understand how the channels are working, how they're connected with each other, you will be in position of having your story on this molecular level. Now, if you look at this picture, it really reminds me why I'm studying it, because of the beauty. This is retina from frog that expressed dendrite 2, uh, which is a fluorescent protein you can activate by light, and you can see the change in color to green from red. And you can mark those proteins and study them in vivo as they progress from the site of synthesis to the site of its function and later on to the site of its degradation. So, eyes come in varieties of different ways uh, and they are really a beautiful uh, evolutionary example of something that has been evolved perfectly. And I mean perfectly because our eye is capable of detecting single photon as well as about 100 million photons per second. Can you hear me with the microphone? This one? Or should I go better there? Yes, but you have to, I guess, switch on. I, I, switch on? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I will just need, how about now? Yes, yes. Very good. Uh, so, I wanted also to get off my chest that it's going to be a quite a long lecture and, and, and hopefully you will not fall asleep. So I will keep you because I sometimes get too excited and then go a longer. But the good news is we don't have a speaker after. <laughs> so you can just test how important vision is. Even if you look on that little picture without colors, you can recognize so many details. And that happens because photon goes to the eye and is converted into neuronal system. And actually, many of you perhaps do not know that eye evolved before brain. Why did the brain? That's why about two thirds of the brain works toward supporting of vision. We can memorize images. We can do so many things from the single photon to this hundred million photon per second. We can recognize colors, and all of this is based on a very simple chemistry. And today I will focus exclusively on those topics. So you have the front of the eye that allows the photon to be focused on the back of the eye. And then you have this light sensitive tissue called retina. And in this layer structure, so it's accessible again by varieties of methods, including electrophysiology as well as biochemistry. 80% of all of these cells in the retina are photoreceptor cells. Those are the photoreceptors, rod and cones, that support vision. And then the signal is transmitted to secondary neuron and ganglion cells and sent to brain for processing. So some of the processing are happening in the retina, most of it interpretation is happening in the brain. So you can see that the light has to travel through transparent part of the retina, the bipolar and ganglion cells, before it reaches the photoreceptor cells. And in a very specific structure called outer segment, where all of these physical chemical processes are taking place before the 
the Roman signal is generated. So I will tell you four little stories about rhodopsin and its color pigment, and we make it really as bright to understand on a structural level to understand color vision by using crystallography to get a structure of the color pigment and to know the differences between those pigments. Then I will talk about retinoid isomerase. As you can imagine, our vision is continuously regenerated. It is not a single process that lasts for life. It's continuously regenerated. And that happened because the light-sensitive chromophore, 11 since retina, is continuously resynthesized. And as we use, with single photon, there is a one isomerization process that one molecule has to be remade to be light sensitive. And the key enzyme is retinoid isomerase. We spent 15 years or more, and I would say perhaps all my scientific life, to understand the isomerization process because it's one of the most elegant in chemistry. It's, you have a gris molecule which yet it changes its conformation and how the chemist will do it, and, and we will get to that. Then finally, last time when I came, I talked about liver congenital amaurosis. It's a blinding disease. Unfortunately, mother will recognize that the child is blind because it has a weakly eye. It will search for the clues, but yet cannot process this information. So we generate animal models. Veterinarians identify blind dog with the same genetic lesion, and today I can report to you that those studies went through a clinical studies where children, young adults, were treated to restore vision. Almost a miracle. You have no vision, you can restore vision. Okay? So don't fall asleep. Because at the end, I will tell you about true science. It is about two photon imaging of the retina. And it is true because it's carried out by my life. So it must be correct. So we go back about 150 years, uh, where we have three very important, um, I would say, go back, two very important people, and the third one, during World War II time, uh, George Walt, who add chemistry to our vision. So Franz Boo, uh, this is, you know, 8th of uh, 17, uh, 19th century, where scientists, there were so few, that studied a problem all their life. And let's say organic chemists will synthesize all of the molecules around, let's say, flavonoids. And will do all of this throughout the life and publish one paper. Right? One paper. All of the chemistry was there. And also the biologists, they divided the science into this uh, enclaves that they studied. And Paul was a young guy uh, who studied vision. And he wanted to understand how vision process and so on. And then, unfortunately, the guy, you can imagine it, yourself, a student, and then Alczewski comes in and says, well, I will do this better. And that was exactly Vila Kine, who added important aspect to vision, but he was hated by that, because he shouldn't go to the student area of research. But this is a real story. You can read about this, because there is life before PDF. I promise you, there, is, there are some wonderful historical accounts of science. And from history, you learn the, the future. And so I strongly encourage you. And then finally, George Walt, who got a Nobel Prize in 63, uh, he was a very curious chemist with, without NMR, without mass spec, without anything. He elucidated the chemistry of vision. And I will talk a little bit about him. It's a very interesting man. He uh, was uh, called by President Kennedy to join the advisory board, uh, President Kennedy, was very famous of recruiting the top people in the disciplines. And so George left and he was advised to do science and then came back five or six years later and unfortunately science moved so far that he decided uh, to focus on teaching. And his classes was the best attended classes at Harvard uh, that really were oversolved and there was no place to stand. Uh, he was such a fantastic teacher. Now, let's go back to vision, okay? Shall we? Okay, so this is a slide of uh, Wille, Kina, and Bolt, and the experiment on the left, it shows the isomerization. So Wille uh, took the retina and put it on a paper and exposed to light, and the retina changed color, and then it became colorless. Very clever, simple experiment, right? So it's something that in the retina was light-sensitive, then it led to 
change of the color. And unfortunately, he developed various severe tuberculosis, was sent back to Italy to spread more, and then he died, unfortunately. And the project has been picked up by Kina, who was a very established, well-known physiologist. A physiologist. And what he has done is another clever experiment. You know, the back of the eye is black, and he took this retina, put back on this black part of the retina, and discovered that retina now can regenerate, can change the color. And that's all. That's what they discovered 150 years. We're still doing this. And it wasn't until uh, Walt that described the chemistry. And uh, Walt was a very interesting fellow who uh, thought first that carotenoids, the longer molecule, the double molecule of like retinoids, are important in this process because it was known since the Egyptians that if you don't have carotenoids, you can go blind. But carotenoids were linked to retinoids for that reason. So, uh, because carotenoids can be split in the middle and they form retinoids. So he, with a very great intuition of the chemist, understood that this chromophore is 11 cis configuration. So you have 11, 12 carbon, and you can see this is out of so many possibilities, the only one that is in a cis conformation. And then light causes isomerization to all trans, and then release all trans retinal, which is colorless, get reduced very quickly to retinol. And the re recovery of this process is again taking all trans retinol in this black part, we call it a pigment epithelium, this black part fix up the retinol and reform enzymatically dark side of our vision, recover this evidence retinol. So this is yet another slide. When you look on the retina, I'm really surprised that not everybody is studying it because Look at how beautiful, how simple it is. But yet, the simplicity is also the beauty of that system. You have the neuronal retina that process visual processes and uh, the, the visual signal from photoreceptors. And photoreceptor cells very closely attached to the pigmented part, this pigment epithelium. And the outer segment are full of membranes that contains light sensitive molecules. You can see the EM sections of the rods. They are loaded with membrane proteins. And this is again very important for our vision. And then pigmented cells, critical. You can see clearly from this slide, there is no vasculature in the upper part of the retina. Everything has to come from choroidal capillary that is located above the RPE. All nutrients, everything, and waste has to come through this epithelial cells. So when one has retina detachment, it's a not good thing. And within the day, retina will die and the vision will be gone. So this contact is extremely important. And we think that, again, we know this because we're smart people, but even bacteria, the lower organism, develop the visual system by two cell systems. One for the receptor cells and the other called helper cell, pigmented cells, again, to support that vision. So this two cell system evolved from a long time ago. Now, you can see now the EM uh, study of photoreceptors, uh, the RPE cells, hexagonal cells with a lot of processes, and then section through, you can see a, a really large cell that contacts about 50 or so, depending on which part of the retina, that contacts photoreceptor cells. So multiple photoreceptor cells, they contact the RPE cells. And then I will digress very quickly. This contact is also very important because at morning, Today, we share about 10% of this outer segment to uh, RPE cells, and that's how the cell renew itself. Uh, within a week, we don't have all membranes in photoreceptor cells. It gets renewed every time, 10% at morning goes away and builds up through the rest of the day, and then start all over this process. So we have a phagocytosis, which is taking place by those cells. And phagocytosis is a process known everywhere. And in this case, uh, RPE is the most active metabolic uh, protein <coughs> uh, cell that is involved in this phagocytosis. But on the left is the structure using cryolium, the structure of rotator segment, which contains the visual peak 